Hello, I'm John, this is my Bladegeist Revenant model, and you're watching War Games Models and Other Hobbies. Hello and welcome to another real-time painting video. Today I'll be painting the base of the Bladegeist Revenant. If you want to see the first part of this video, I'll post a link in the description. I'm just going to jump straight on into it, painting the tombstone and I'll have a chat while I do it. So I'm going to use two basic colours for the tombstone. I'm going to use Dawnstone and Grey Seer and I'll also use some washes on them as well. But We'll start painting it and see how it turns out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is wherever the hex wraith flame, the green, is on the tombstone, I'm just going to cover that with the dawnstone just to give a starting point for the stone paint. But yeah, it's a nice model this one. I've enjoyed painting the main body. So now getting on to the base will really is a really kind of nice cathartic process. I don't play these models in Age of Sigma or anything, but as a collect a collector's yeah, let me say that again, as a collector's piece, it's quite a nice thing to have in the cabinet. I said in the previous video, one of my favourite models that I'd like to get to paint up is the Banshee from the Ninth Haunt se um, series of models. So like I said, this is a real-time painting video, so there's going to be no cuts during the painting process. So what you see is the actual outcome. And I'm trying to make sure it stays on camera while I do this. So yeah, obviously you can either sit down and watch the whole thing, have it on in the background, or if you want to fast forward while I do it, it's fine by me. I find the videos I do for my YouTube channel, currently I'm using AI to help generate ideas which has increased my productivity, no end. And that's my dog. If you can hear the little noises. Before she goes to sleep, she often makes a lot of noise. Like a grumpy little kid. Where was it? Yeah, so um, producing my videos for the channel, I find it quite cathartic a part of my hobby anyway now. It's, if I'm doing a project, I like to document it. So, more for myself than anyone else, just producing the videos allows me to kind of keep track of what I've been working on. And it also means I don't have to always remember exactly how I've done something because I've got a video to remind me which is quite nice to do and everything I include in the videos is stuff I've bought myself I'm not sponsored by anyone or anything like that I'm too small fry for that and it doesn't really bother me either way it means I can say what I want about stuff okay so that's the first bit of paint on there I'm going to use my hairdryer to force dry that a little bit, as this is real time. A 
so as you can see get it in focus there we go I've just painted some areas of the tombstone with well, the gravestone with the dawnstone what I'm now going to do is I'm going to paint an ink wash in places on it and then follow that up with some more dawnstone then some dry brushing so I think I'm actually going to start with some Devlin mud this is my all-time favorite paint I know we now have Agrax Earthshade which is its equivalent but there's something that Agrax doesn't have that Devlin mud does so that's why I'm going to be using it I mean it's my own personal kind of opinion on the wash itself but if anyone agrees put a comment if anyone disagrees please put a comment as well I always like the conversation make sure I'm on camera while I do this So what I'll be doing with, once the tombstone, the gravestone is painted, I'll do the ground around the base as well. So yeah, I'm not sure how long this video is going to take, however long it takes for painting this whole base. Obviously I'm going to be force drying it with the hairdryer, so that will speed it up somewhat. So there is that wash over the top. You can see quite quickly it gives a nice depth of colour to it. So let's force dry that. Okay, so there we have that ready for the next stage. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to the Dawn Star and I'm just going to pick out a few little details and paint a few little patches on it. So it's not a dry brush or anything like that, it's just getting that colour in a few places. Apologies if I just stop talking while I get lost while I paint it it's I'd like to do more painting videos but I prefer rather than having to edit everything doing these real-time ones so please put a comment if you'd like to see real-time painting videos rather than ones that are cut so 
you actually get to see how long it takes. Please drop a comment. It's much appreciated if people comment on the things they'd like to see. So I'm going to use a bit of the grey sear now just to pick out a few bits on this gravestone. So what I'll be doing with this after this coat is I'll do a force dry and then I will do another wash probably with null oil and then a dry brushing just to pick out the detail. And this is going to go over the whole thing. Enough on my brush to pull that around. So I, I do prefer painting with shades and washes. It's my kind of chosen painting style. So building up layers of wash and shades, I like using inks to get the kind of the colours that I'm looking for. But I do like just to build up those layers while painting. It's everyone has their own style of painting that they like to do or they like to experiment and play around with lots of different ones but I do prefer this one personally. And if there are any painting videos that you'd like me to do a video on, I'm always open to suggestions. It's one of the benefits of YouTube is I can be in contact with the viewers and make content that you want to see. Okay. So another thing that I find I'm constantly learning when I'm making these videos and playing around with different kit and things like that which is part of my hobby as well I really like this process of making videos. I've got quite a few planned that I need to sit down and do but obviously it takes time and this isn't my job so I have to fit it in when I can. Okay so let's force dry that null oil. So what I'm going to do now, rather than dry brush the grey stone straight away, I'm going to paint the vine, then I'm going to start painting the base, and then I'll dry brush all the things together to kind of tie it in, to give it a little bit of um, um, link it together, and so on. So for the vine, I'm just going to use Auroch Flesh. I'm not going to worry about 
any dry brush colour over there, extra one. I might use the wash again, but I'm going to just stick with this as a base colour. Yeah, I, one thing I would like to start doing is seeing other people's models a lot more. So if you're watching this video and you've got your own versions of these that you'd like to share with me, check me out over on Twitter and drop me a message. Over on Twitter, I'm John the Warhammer Modeler. I always like to see other people's work and how people have painted things. Okay, there's and so while I was painting that vine, I've kind of decide what I'll do is give it a wa I will give it a wash but then I'll dry brush it with the auric flesh over the top of the wash but we'll see how it looks once I've kind of got the base on now I've got two things that I'm going to use for the base I've got the astro granite as well as the agrelian earth I like to mix up my base is a little bit. If you have a look at uh, one of my previous videos, I'll leave a link in the description of my go-to basing technique. It just allows me to um, create the, a simple base which is ready to go very quickly. Let's give this a good shake. This one's starting to run out. So, let me get a basing tool applicator. There we go, and what I want to do is just put this on, spread it on quite thickly, And I might use more of this one than the astro granite, but it'll all tie together once I've kind of washed it and dry brushed it. But I quite like the idea of the kind of the parched, broken ground. I tend to do it with a lot of the bases that I do. It gives a consistency to all of them, so they all look like they can sit together quite easily. Right, I'm only going to use a little bit of the Astro Granite. Reason being, because I'm forced drying this, when you hair dry this, it doesn't come out in the kind of the same way as if you naturally let it dry. So I'm going to have to pick some of the gritty bits out so I can apply them straight away and kind of give it a little bit of texture. So what you'll probably find is once I've dried it, I'm going to have to rough it up slightly.
Okay. Make sure I clean that off. So what I'm now going to do is, again with the hairdryer, I'm going to force dry this, but as I do it, you'll see it start cracking. So I'll try and keep it on camera while I do this. So there we now have the cracked base. I'm just going to use the applicator tool to rough up some of the astra granite. So I want that to have a bit of texture. Normally I just leave it to dry naturally, the astra granite and you get a much nicer texture but as I'm forcing this one like I said as I was forcing this one before I start the head row I want it to um, have still have a bit of texture okay so the next thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually give it a wash of the Agrax Earthshade, then I'll force dry it, then I'm going to give it a, another wash of Noln Oil, then force dry it again, and then apply a dry brush to a lot of it. The purpose of the Agrax is to go into any of the cracks that have appeared on the base, and to fill any of the sections that have gone down to the white primer. Now as primers go, I did say it in the last video I think, but my preferred primer is a white primer, mainly because of the way I like to build up my colours and things like that. But I do occasionally use the other ones depending on what I'm painting. everywhere okay let's give that bit of a force dry Okay, so let me get a dry brush. It doesn't have to be a small one for this bit. I've got a 
on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush with Dawnstone. Then I'm going to give it a another wash of Nuln Oil. Originally I wasn't going to do this dry brush, but as I'm painting I kind of have thoughts about the process. Okay. And um, what I use the dry brushing for while I'm doing in between the wash coats is to bind everything together so it starts to give a more coherent kind of base. So it doesn't matter if I dry brush onto the tombstone at all, that's fine. And just quickly knock that over with the hairdryer. There we go. Okay. So now I want the null oil. Let's get a another brush to help me apply that. So let's. this up and I'm going to go slightly over the gravestone, the tombstone while I'm painting this I've got to think about what I'll dry brush this with. I've got an idea. To lighten a few bits of it up. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see at this stage, with those layers of the technical paints for the base and then the ink washes, the dry brushes, the colours turned out very similar to the gravestone, which is okay. Let me just quickly force this null oil to dry. Okay. Now I think. Let me have a look at my paint drawer for an extra colour for the vine, but I might just leave it as is for now. Anyway, let's get... I know what paint I want for the dry brushing. Uh, it's going to be a combination of two of them. So I'm going to do one coat of Rakarth Flesh, and then I'm going to, over the top of that, put some of the grey sear. So I like the Rakarth Flesh as a paint for many things, but it's got a really nice base colour that you can build up from. So I use quite a big dry brush for this one.
Okay. So I'm going to go straight into the grey sear. I'm not even going to clean the brush. I'm just going to use the same dry brush. And on my palette, I'm just going to mix the paints so I get a bit of a lighter finish on there. That's what I want. that so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get another green to paint the vine and maybe put some spots of lichen or something on there so maybe a yellowy green a more yellowy green and then I'll sort the rest of the base out Hopefully I won't knock the camera, which I'm going to when I go into here, so apologies when I knock that. So... What shall I go with? Actually, what I'm going to do... There we go. I'm going to give the vine a wash of Thrakar Green, knock that back with the hairdryer, and then dry brush with the Auroc Flesh. Not too worried if I get this over on any other part. I'm going to put a bit of Agrax on there as well. So although the Devlin Mud is my favourite, I don't use it all the time instead of Agrax because it's getting harder and harder to come by so I don't want to waste it. Let's force dry this. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm actually going to mix this paint a little bit. So, ooh, as I hit the camera and I shake it, I'm going to use Auroc Flesh. So I'm going to put some of that on my palette. I'm going to mix that with some Rakar Flesh. So that has knocked it back slightly. It's just there, the, this colour I've just mixed. So let me find a small dry brush. I need to buy some more dry brushes. I kind of really use and abuse them, and then they turn into little stumpy. Kind 
kind of, I don't know if you can really call them a brush anymore. So going to do with that is put a few little dabs around the base just as a different little contrast of colour there we go so finally the last thing that I need to do is paint the room of my base. Let me take it off my paint stand. So I personally prefer a black rim to the bases, irrelevant of what they're painted as. Just something I've always historically liked. Um, it can be any colour that you want. It can be the same colour as the base, whatever, it doesn't matter. It can just be left entirely up to you but I like to put a black rim on all my bases sorry if that was off camera I have noticed there is a dent in this base which might be actually due to the hairdryer so I might see if I can tidy that up at another point but for now I'm quite happy just painting this base as is okay So, oh yeah, that has tweaked quite a bit. I'll tidy that up though at a later date. So there we have our Blade Geist Revenant all painted. That was about 35 minutes or so of painting to finish that base. I'll leave some photos at the end of the video. But like I've said, if there's any other videos you'd like me to make or any other painting advice, please drop a comment. But yeah, that's it for this real-time painting video. Hope you've enjoyed it. My name's John, and you've been watching War Games Models and other hobbies.